I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. If you've ever lived in poverty, I mean, real poverty, where you're struggling to meet your basic needs for food, shelter, and clothing, it's almost certainly not a lifestyle choice. Uh, this is not something you would voluntarily opt to return to. If you were to ask people who are currently living in po poverty whether they would like to continue in their current circumstances um, or transcend to living a life where their basic needs were met, I'm guessing it's almost certain that they would all choose in a heartbeat to move out of poverty. Yet, one category of money strips, and money scripts are those unconscious beliefs about money that underlie our financial behavior, is described as taking a vow of poverty. And it's more common that you might, than you might think it is. Um, so I want to reemphasize that the vow of poverty is unconscious. It's not a deliberate choice. But it's a set of deep beliefs shaped by childhood experiences. Someone with these money scripts isn't consciously aware of these beliefs and not consciously aware of the uh, uh, decisions that they make and the, the behaviors that are likely to keep them in poverty. Like other beliefs that result in problematic money behaviors, a vow of poverty is rooted in good intentions includes a set of money scripts and extreme beliefs that were formed typically when the person was very young as a way of soothing and protecting a wounded part of themselves vows of poverty might form as a result of growing up with circumstances and experiences such as feeling envied and resented because of one's family having more money than families of one's friends, or maybe being taught that wealth is inherently evil or corrupting, or being taught that understanding finances is just too hard, um, maybe learning a religious viewpoint that if you have faith, God will provide, and trying to provide for yourself is actually a, a lack of faith, or maybe learning that financial success is pointless, Perhaps extended family members pressured a child's parents to share any extra income, or parents take away the money that a child has earned. All of these can be reasons, and it's, it's not limited to these, that we develop uh, about poverty. The good intention and protective purpose behind the vow of poverty can make a person take a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> different actions or behaviors. The intent might be to keep you equal to those around you so you belong, or to keep you from being or appearing to be evil or corrupt, or to avoid wealth in order to maintain the, mor the, the moral high ground and be a good person. Um, say, to avoid financial success out of fear that you might not be able to handle money or to show faith in God or that the universe will provide. Another possibility is the hope that a vow of poverty will fulfill a deep desire to be taken care of, which is often driven by the need to be seen and heard, valued and accepted. The protective intent of the money script might be if I am self-denying enough and a good person, they will notice and approve of me. Unfortunately, regardless of the original protective intention, money scripts around a vow of poverty can often result in financial behaviors that cause more harm than good. People with poverty money scripts might sabotage potential success, stay underemployed and underpaid, give away money to a degree that really limits their ability to provide for their own basic needs, 
financially enable friends and family members and possibly to uh, fail to save or plan for retirement. Such financial behaviors can damage family relationships as well. For example, if one spouse is working toward being financially successful and the other seems focused on financial failure, I would say conflict is probably going to be inevitable. So for spouses, family members, or financial advisors, it's really helpful to understand that someone with an unconscious vow of poverty is not simply stingy or cheap. Scolding them, shaming, or confronting them is unlikely to help change their financial behavior. Instead, it's essential to explore their origins and intents of the beliefs behind that behavior. Thanks for listening.